Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm going to talk you through the different types of storage used for insect collections. So there's a real variety of different storage types used, and that really varies depending on the country that you're in, the history of the collection, how old it is, the size of the institution, and most importantly, the preparation method. So for most dry pinned insect collections, they would have been kept either in store boxes or in drawers within cabinets. So most small or private collections are generally housed in store boxes like these. So traditionally they're made of wood, but sometimes they are also made of cardboard, very strong, sturdy cardboard. And then previously they would have been lined with cork as well. Now cork isn't a great substrate, which we now know, because over time it can shrink. And what happens when the cork shrinks is that it either pushes the pin out or it grips onto the pin so tightly, which makes it very difficult for collection users and curators to remove that specimen um, and it also risks damage. So we do try to avoid cork where possible now and instead we use a more friendly alternative which is plastazote. So this is a polyethylene foam, very dense um, and nice and user friendly. So most modern store boxes are like this. They are lined with plastazote um, and sometimes double-sided. And they also generally have a better seal on them. So they are more pest proof, but some of the older boxes really aren't very providing much protection against pests at all. Store boxes can be really useful for short-term storage or for overflow specimens, but they aren't so good for the long-term and ultimate accessibility of the collection. Glass topped entomological drawers are the ideal method of storage for your dry pinned specimens and the preferred method for most, for most institutions. They provide um, a, an insight into the drawer without even removing the lid by having this glass top, which is really great. Often they also have a fantastic seal on them. So the drawers are your last barrier of defense against pests and they really need to be airtight to make sure that pests don't get in. Other things to consider when you're looking at drawers for your collections is to make sure that they are deep enough to house continental length pins with good clearance from the lid. Also make sure that they're not made of any unsuitable wood such as oak because woods like this off gas and this can damage the specimens and the labels. And then of course your drawers should go within cabinets to keep them nice and protected from light. One thing to be very mindful of is how you remove the lids from these drawers. You should do it incredibly carefully and slowly, and this is to reduce the kind of draft of air rushing into the drawer when you remove the lid, um, especially if you're working with things like moths and butterflies. The last thing you want is to have a big gush of air moving in and all your wings fluttering. So the older style drawers would have been lined just with one substrate and the specimens arranged in columns within that. But the more contemporary method is to use unit trays like these. So these give much more flexibility. What we have here is each tray contains a species. So all these specimens are of that one species. And it just really makes the collection so much more efficient in terms of space and how you incorporate incoming material. So you don't need to account for and try to predict expansion space to leave. Um, you can really just shuffle the trays around as and when required. So much, much quicker than uh, potentially removing and rejigging all the specimens in a drawer. And of course, you've got then the added benefit of you're not having to handle the specimens multiple times and risk damage, because every time you do move a specimen, you do risk potential damage. So there's further flexibility with unit trays in that you can choose different sizes. Uh, and this is really useful depending on the size of the insects that you're housing. And they come out very easily like so. Um, and you've got the option of either purchasing ones that are pre-lined with plastazote or adding the plastazote yourself. Modern drawers are great because they're interchangeable within their cabinets and it makes it easier to insert new drawers into the sequence as and when new material arrives. A few things to consider with cabinets. We do prefer metal ones to wood ones nowadays. Um, and also it's really important that they have the good seal on them. This is one of your barriers, your physical barriers against pests. And also it really helps, uh, again, with pest management to keep the cabinets elevated off the ground. Ideally, dry preserved insect collections should be stored in a stable environment where both humidity and temperature are controlled for. The standard conditions are 18 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity. A high humidity will encourage mold to grow, so should be avoided at all costs. And warm temperatures and high humidity provide the ideal conditions for pests to thrive. 
Some historic storage, like wooden store boxes, will expand and contract under fluctuating environmental conditions. This will eventually lead to cracks in the storage, making them vulnerable to pest infestations. This is why ensuring a stable environment is so crucial. So another preservation method that you might encounter, particularly in historical collections, is papered specimens. So papering is quite literally where the insects have been preserved within paper envelopes. Now these were either in glassine paper or in newspaper, and small triangle shaped envelopes were often made uh, just from newspaper cuttings. Now this was certainly a temporary method at the time. They were very convenient for transporting insects from the field in this way, particularly butterflies, moths and dragonflies. But really for the long term, this isn't a good method of storage. So as you can see, these boxes are very old. The, the entomologists were opportunistic, so they were using cigar boxes, biscuit tins, and these certainly are not pest proof. So the other thing is that they're not making the collection very accessible. So by having them stored in this way, it's really time consuming to go through and search for things. Of course, every time you manipulate these envelopes too, you risk damage to the specimen as well. Most museums are harboring collections like these. They are pretty tricky to work with, but fortunately new methods are being developed to find an easier solution to curating and making these collections accessible. So check the training notes for more details on this. For slide collections, the right type of storage method is going to be dependent on the type of preservation that you've got. So for thick or liquid mounts, they can occasionally leak or travel due to, due to the influence of gravity, so really they should be stored horizontally. Um, and many collectors would have used boxes like these. Though some would have had bespoke cabinets built and they would have been stored this way. Thin mounts, however, can actually be stored vertically. Um, this has the benefits of saving space and also means that you can use them like a card index. Whichever of these slide mount styles that you have, your storage furniture should be nice and robust to protect them from any potential impacts. Soft-bodied insects are better suited to wet style preservation. This is because if they were dried up, they would pretty much shrivel up and their key identification features would be obscured. So instead they are preserved in either ethanol or industrial methylated spirits, IMS. And this applies to pretty much all the immature stages of insects, but also for particular groups that are a little bit more fragile as adults like mayflies, um, this is also the preservation style that's preferred. It's also preferred for all arachnids. These preserved fluid collections require specialised storage conditions and constant maintenance or they will rapidly deteriorate. Most wet specimens are kept within 70 to 80% IMS and this dehydrates the specimens and maintains them at that state of preservation. Then it's also important to consider if your samples are being used for molecular work, they should be stored in absolute ethanol and this is to help uh, prevent degradation of the DNA. The real challenge is to ensure that the alcohol does not evaporate, which would cause the preservation to deteriorate or in the worst case, the specimens could completely dry up. To avoid this, the specimen should ideally be stored in glass jars within a cool, stable environment with low light levels. These collections are hazardous as both ethanol and IMS are highly flammable. Please check the training notes for further guidance on how to care for this type of collection.